Hola, bienvenidos a un nuevo capítulo de Hablemos de Procesos. Hoy estamos continuando la serie donde estamos explorando diferentes libros que hablan sobre mejores prácticas para BPM. Y hoy tenemos un invitado que nos acompaña desde Estados Unidos, eh, originalmente es de Alemania, pero hoy tenemos la participación del de doctor Matías Kirchmer que nos acompaña en este episodio y vamos a estar hablando sobre eh, uno de sus libros, tiene varios, así que nos vamos a enfocar en, en uno de ellos. Um, así que... Muchas gracias por acompañarnos. Thank you for joining us, Dr. Matthias Kirchmer. It's a pleasure to have you in our show. Muchas uh, gracias. Es un placer para mí. Yeah, you, the, just for the audience purposes, you do speak a little Spanish, uh, even though we're going to host the interview in English. Um, but you were telling me earlier that you're married to a person from Chile. Is that correct? Sí, mi uh, esposa es uh, chilena pero es una profesora de inglés y por eso normalmente hablamos uh, inglés, uh, pero aprendo uh, español y espero que la próxima vez uh, 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 habla, uh, hablo uh, solamente español. Today, no, no, no. unfortunately, I have to fall back into my broken English. That's perfect. Oh, I, I don't speak German, so we're going to have to do it in English. <laughs> so that, okay. hopefully that will be the middle ground. So thank you very much for joining. Um, well, I, just to tell you a little bit how I ran into uh, Dr. Kirschmer, um, we, well, I've been following some of your work previously online uh, through BPMD. Um, I've also read parts of, of your books and, and also served with you uh, as part of the committee on APQC. So interestingly enough, we're, we've been connected even though we haven't actually met. So this is the first time yeah. we actually get to interact, um, but we've been somewhat related in different committees or different activities where we've involved and, and we also had the opportunity just recently to be speakers at uh, the event in Peru, the VPM day, uh, which was not long ago. So um, we, we've connected, but I'm glad that we were able this time to finally set up a time and have the actual conversation with you here. Um, so thank you for joining us and thank you for making the time because I know your agenda, it's, it's quite busy these days. Sure. And the next step will be that we meet in person. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. So to get us started, could you please share a little bit with the audience about your experience with BPM? How is it that you started on this journey? Yeah, that's a, a great question. I have been uh, in that field of BPM now for almost uh, 30 years. So uh, quite uh, quite a while, uh, about half of that time, I worked for IDS Shear that uh, some of you may know for their ARIS uh, software. Mm -hmm. uh, worked there also very closely with uh, the founder, with uh, Professor Shear. We have published a few books uh, uh, together and uh, uh, with uh, IDS Shear, I also came then to the US uh, to uh, introduce uh, our uh, consulting services around processes and areas uh, to the US. When the company got uh, sold, I moved on and uh, uh, joined uh, Accenture as a managing director or partner uh, and global responsible for their BPM uh, practice. And uh, after seven uh, years, I then decided together with another a partner to uh, found BPMD, uh, the company just focused on process management uh, Uh, that uh, we have been building uh, since then. Uh, the, the reason why I came into BPM to come back uh, to your question, I've forgotten it, uh, was that uh, uh, during my studies at uh, the uh, Karlsruhe Institute uh, for uh, Technology in uh, uh, Germany, I did uh, a master uh, thesis uh, about uh, 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 here uh, information systems and uh, uh, processes, uh, process models uh, as basis uh, for the development of software and uh, the, 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 the planning of uh, integrated uh, software systems. And then uh, uh, I got uh, in touch of uh, uh, Professor Schier, August Wilhelm Schier, uh, the uh, thought leader in process management and uh, Uh, computer integrated manufacturing uh, uh, in the time. So I, uh, I wrote him a, a letter with some questions and uh, uh, surprisingly enough, he, uh, he answered, he invited me in his uh, research uh, uh, institute and uh, I was very excited and applied for a position there and I got a job offer. And then uh, a week before I was supposed to start as a researcher in his institute, uh, he called and said, well, I've also just found it uh, a, a, a company that is focused on process and uh, process management, your qualification should 
perfectly fit. If you are interested, I can send uh, the, the CEO and uh, he came then uh, into uh, my university. We had a discussion and then I decided Friday to start Monday at uh, the wow. process company instead of the research institute. And that was the start of my uh, uh, process uh, journey and uh, then I got involved in this SAP uh, wave uh, led uh, one of the first for uh, uh, R3 implementations and that I also used as basis for my PhD and I uh, did my PhD in information systems about process-led uh, uh, ERP implementation. So uh, uh, always in this, uh, uh, in this area between process, technology and uh, uh, people. Perfect. That's that's interesting. Now, um, a few years after you started writing your books, and, and we're going to be talking a little bit about high performance through business process management today. So um, I know it's a tough question to ask, but if you could summarize your book in one line, what line would that be? Well, uh, I think the most important message is that a process and process management is not uh, first and foremost about methods and tools, but it's about uh, the value that, uh, that you uh, create. And that's also the reason why I like to talk about value-driven uh, process uh, management. So you always think first about the outcomes and then you line up uh, the methods and tools behind it. And uh, uh, I believe that is a big uh, challenge in this uh, community of uh, PPM practitioners, because many of them grew up in a time 20 uh, uh, years or 20 plus years ago when there were very few methods and tools to work with processes available. So the typical practitioner had to invent that. So they, they all love their, their process modeling approach and the way they use uh, their tools. But now we are in the, in the lucky situation that we have uh, good uh, uh, the standards like BPMN available, that we have uh, uh, modeling uh, tools like uh, Ares or Signavio, that we have uh, uh, mining, uh, process mining tools. All that is uh, there. So uh, we, we don't need to focus on uh, the tools themselves. We need to focus on creating values with that. Yeah. That's the, 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 the key message of the book. Okay. And something else that I've, I've found in the book is that you also talk a lot about how to turn strategy into actual execution. So how to mm -hmm. trend, how to take strategy. And I, and I know that's a concept that a lot of times executives are very interested in. Um, how do we, you know, it, it sounds really appealing from a strategy perspective, but then from an execution perspective, how, how can we make it a reality? So um, comment a little bit on how is it that we can turn strategy into execution in a digital world? Yeah, very interesting uh, topic. And, uh, um, you know, there exists a very solid uh, research that an organization only key, uh, competes through 15 to 20 percent of their processes, 15 to 20 percent. That means 80 plus percent of business processes are commodity processes that uh, you need and you need to uh, execute them in an uh, average uh, performance level. But uh, sophisticated innovation or optimization initiatives in those areas don't uh, uh, pay off. And if you want to make your strategy happen, you need to know what are the 15 to 20 percent of processes that are most relevant for your strategy, that have the highest impact uh, on your strategy. And once you know those high impact uh, processes, you uh, uh, evaluate uh, their maturity level. So how well are we doing in those uh, processes? And the high impact, low maturity processes, these are the ones to address so that uh, you have the, the highest uh, uh, effect on your strategy execution and uh, uh, really uh, align, align every initiative with uh, the, their importance for your strategy. And such a process impact assessment, I think, uh, is a, a very, very key component of a functioning uh, process management discipline. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. And, and I guess connected to that comment that you're just saying right now, 
Um, the book also talks a little bit about, about how to prioritize processes. Is that mm. correct? So how can we pick yeah. to the point which are those 15 to 20 percent processes that would make the most mm. significant so that we were able to intervene or improve these processes? So what's your suggestion and how can people uh, start choosing and focusing on this uh, particular processes? Yeah, a prioritization has become a, a big topic, prioritization of processes and with that uh, a prioritization of uh, projects, of course. Yeah. And uh, uh, processes uh, can be prioritized uh, based on what I just uh, uh, explained. Uh, the, the more important a process is for your strategy, the higher mm -hmm. the priority to address it. But how do you operationalize that? Uh, uh, that's a topic uh, I've been uh, working on for uh, quite a while uh, during my time at Accenture, but then also a lot uh, during uh, here the last years at uh, BPMD. And uh, the, the solution for that is pretty uh, straightforward. Uh, you can break down your strategy with the, the overall uh, priorities uh, into uh, goals and your goals into so-called value drivers. And value drivers mm -hmm. is uh, what you need to get right uh, to make your strategy happen. So typical value drivers is that you need to reduce your uh, uh, maintenance costs, that you need to achieve your compliance requirements, things like that. Mm -hmm. So if you achieve those value drivers, you achieve your goals and with that your strategic priorities. And uh, to identify your high priority and high impact processes, you define for each process what is the impact on each value driver. Then you can calculate the weighted total and like that you can then select the 15-20% that has have the highest impact and these are the ones with the highest priority in general. And the the processes among those that have a low maturity level that means they're very important but we are doing poorly these mm -hmm. are the the ones uh, that have the highest priority need to be addressed first and uh, a project can then be prioritized again based on the the impact of the project on the process if a project uh, uh, handles uh, one or several high impact uh, processes it's much more important then uh, if it uh, just fixes uh, some uh, commodity area. Yeah. yeah, that makes perfect sense as well. Um, and just to give you maybe a, a, to, to add a comment and give a bit of color to that. Uh, years ago, uh, uh, I worked with a big uh, uh, utility company and uh, they had a, a, a a new CEO, very process-minded, uh, and uh, launched a, a whole continuous improvement initiative. And they have to very quickly, between 1,000 and 1,200 uh, continuous improvement projects going on. That went like that for two years. And then uh, the CFO came up with the following question. He said, OK, now we have been uh, doing all those projects for two years. But if I look at our top line, we don't have more revenue. Mm -hmm. If I look at our bottom line, we don't have more profit. So what in the hell are we improving? And we could show them that uh, uh, two thirds of those uh, 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 projects and initiatives were around commodity processes because there are people have time or they have a bit of budget left and that is uh, an, uh, an issue we see very often in such uh, project management organizations instead of doing what is most important for my strategy they do uh, well what is uh, the the way of the least resistance and this is something we need to correct through an appropriate prioritization Oh, that, that makes that makes perfect sense. You know, I, I've I've heard that in so many cases where it it feels like we're project driven, so it's almost like we're responding to the agenda of the PMO or or the Office of Projects. Um, but yeah. a lot of times, to your point, we're not really questioning if the projects that have been selected have been approved. Are they really pushing the envelope? Are they really helping us to mm -hmm. transform? Our organization or move toward our strategic goals like you were saying so well, like where's the value right because th there's so much pressure on reporting to management what's the return on the investment or what's the value that we're generating from the initiatives but it, it seems like it's it's one of those questions that hasn't yet been answered and i think that 
maybe that's why some efforts in business process management have failed in the past because they have not been able to translate the improvement and, and the efficiencies into actual money, right? Yeah, and uh, uh, you see that happens very often if uh, then uh, uh, people uh, uh, try out a new technology or a new approach in areas that are not important for the company and then they're all excited oh we have uh, fixed uh, uh, our payroll process and we can uh, uh, process that uh, in half of the time but nobody really uh, cares because they all get paid uh, the same day as they were uh, before you need the same uh, number of people so who cares if you could do that in half uh, of the the, the time that uh, doesn't really uh, matter uh, and uh, th therefore the selection of those improvement opportunities and the use of our resources in the context of uh, our strategy uh, is, uh, is a real uh, key topic. Yeah. Now, there's a portion of your book that talks about how process engineers compare to jazz musicians. Mm -hmm. um, could you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, I'm uh, a very big uh, jazz fan. That's also something I have gotten from my former uh, uh, mentor and uh, a teacher, Professor Shia, who is also a, a great jazz fan and jazz uh, musician. Uh, and uh, uh, you see, if you look uh, at uh, uh, a jazz band, uh, it functions basically like uh, I would see functioning uh, 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 a modern uh, organization. Uh, there is, of course, uh, a leader, a band uh, a leader, uh, but uh, once he has called the tune, so set the direction, then uh, all people have their solos, and are supported through the others in the back and uh, once the solo is over the next one plays the solo and uh, is supported by the rest of the band and in a, a company uh, in a today's complex business environment that has to work the same way everybody has to lead and uh, to uh, follow and uh, you need to have the right groove uh, in uh, uh, in doing that and that means also that for a process management, just like a jazz musician cannot play just what they want. They have to follow the, the, the harmony, they have to stay in the rhythm, they stay in the, the structure of the tune. So there are some guidelines, but within those guidelines, they can improve very freely. And with process management, we set those boundaries for the organization so that everybody has an uh, uh, adequate uh, level of freedom like uh, if you have a finance process you may want to define it in every detail because that is the area where uh, you uh, want to have your band just play according to your sheet music and you don't want to have people uh, being too creative so you have your detailed uh, process models if you uh, uh, have here the area where you invent uh, 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 a new product and you have some 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 brainstorming activities there you may want to define that only on a very high level uh, to make sure we move in the right direction but give a lot of freedom to people or when they deal with their clients give a lot of uh, freedom to people so you would uh, define your process on a higher uh, level of uh, detail so again uh, just as you use your sheet music uh, to drive your jazz band, you would use uh, your process models and the different levels of detail to, to drive uh, your uh, organization. And uh, there's lots of uh, uh, other <laughs> points I could make, but uh, then we may have to add a few hours. No, uh, but I love the comparison because um, I think to your point, if we look at our process models, like assets, which I believe they are part of the assets from the organization. Yeah. Um, but then if you have somebody that just came in from a different company, from a different culture or different context, if they look at the process maps, they should be able to play the piece. So, so to your point, like, like if you're reading tabs for the first time, if you're playing an instrument, you don't necessarily have to know much uh, about the song as long as you can read the, yeah. the actual, um, tabs or the chords then you'll be able to play it. So I think that's a fantastic metaphor that you're using uh, and I've never heard it. So I was quite curious about that as well. Um, I have done, uh, just as a, a side remark to that, I've done uh, several uh, workshops and sessions where I uh, hire a jazz band 
and they play 10 tunes and uh, after each tune we uh, discuss a specific aspect uh, uh, that is uh, important for process and uh, process management so uh, something that is very entertaining then for for people but uh, you uh, you really uh, learn and feel uh, how you can uh, move your company forward and uh, uh, you learn basically the 10 key principles of a successful process organization wow that's that's, that's great i think that'll be interesting to sign up to one of those workshops and then have yeah. the jazz band play for 10 songs that's that's quite interesting. <laughs> great you get the benefit of the content and the music so hey exactly <laughs> all right so um i know you've written a couple of other books we mentioned value-driven um, business process management, but are there any new books cooking? Uh, are you working on any new projects or any new books that are um, that, that we should be expecting or looking for in the future? Yeah, of course, I'm always, uh, I always try to summarize my findings in working with uh, different organizations in uh, some uh, publications, books, white papers, uh, uh, articles. Uh, I uh, currently uh, work on uh, something around uh, the digital transformation of process governance. Uh, process governance, of course, has become very uh, uh, important uh, mm -hmm. to really benefit from all these digital trans uh, transformation uh, uh, initiatives. But in order to organize that uh, uh, properly, you need to digitize or digitalize your process governance itself. Uh, uh, you can uh, a benefit now from uh, uh, more sophisticated mining activities because you have uh, your automated uh, processes. You need uh, the structure uh, uh, as a guideline that you can define in your repositories. You can link them uh, to your compliance requirements. So you can uh, uh, make your uh, process governance much more uh, effective. And that is something I uh, currently put uh, uh, paper in uh, a place and uh, I've been uh, uh, writing and uh, researching for quite a few years about what I call the chief process uh, uh, officer and I remember mm -hmm. when I used that first uh, that expression about 20 years ago uh, at a, a conference here in the US everybody was uh, smiling and said well uh, we fight to get a manager who takes care about the topic and you talk about a C-level uh, position that's uh, a bit ridiculous it's very academic uh, but uh, a couple of years ago uh, here one of the universities did a research uh, that there's already uh, more than 900 people uh, uh, out there on LinkedIn with the titles Chief Process uh, Officer and now thousands with titles like General Manager of Process or of uh, Process Excellence or of Process Transformation. So the topic has really moved uh, to the, the, the C-level as uh, we discussed before with value-driven BPM and uh, I'm uh, planning a, a new book about uh, that uh, a chief uh, process officer and its role as a value scout uh, for the information. Do you think that uh, business process management is riding the wave of digital transformation and that's enabling probably some of these positions to be appointed? Um, uh, is that something that you've seen as, as a result of digital transformation becoming such a, a fancy term or, or such a buzzword? Uh, is BPM being benefited by that or is just or, or, or BPM would I guess have the significance that it has regardless of digital transformation? Yeah, that's a, a very good and I think very valid uh, question. And uh, uh, one of the major industry analyst uh, firms uh, published uh, research that uh, uh, only 1% of organizations have their processes enough under control to realize the full potential of uh, digital technologies. If you put a technology in your company, it only provides value if it leads to uh, new or enhanced uh, business processes. So if you don't uh, uh, do that, uh, that change of your processes, you don't really get value out of it. And that's why I uh, am very convinced that BPM has become the value switch for digital transformation. And uh, that's why uh, companies who are successful in 
driving that transformation journey needs to have uh, a solid uh, PPM discipline in place. And there is already a good research I just published uh, earlier this year, a paper with some uh, colleagues of Widener University about uh, uh, here the, the impact of uh, PPM on the value you achieve from uh, digital transformations. And uh, an empiric uh, study with over 200 companies uh, showed very clearly that the, the organizations with a solid PPM capability in place get much higher mm. value out of their uh, uh, digital transformation initiatives than others. So. Uh, 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 I think uh, a BPM and the BPM discipline becomes an integral and key part of such a digital transformation. Yeah, I agree. So as a final question, since we're talking about books, um, could you suggest any particular books on your BPM journey that have made a difference in the way that you look at BPM or that have significantly impacted you or influenced you? So can you think of one or two books that you would be able to suggest to our audience um, as those cornerstones or, the, or those building blocks um, on your journey? Okay, there's of course uh, uh, tons and tons of uh, uh, books in that uh, BPM space and also uh, many uh, 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 really, uh, uh, really good ones. Uh, and uh, for, for me, one of the, 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 the key uh, uh, books that uh, that really have uh, shaped me is uh, uh, Fia's book about uh, uh, Ares, initially uh, one book and then he split it in two uh, Ares business process frameworks and Ares uh, business process uh, modeling. Uh, uh, that's, uh, that's definitely uh, something really uh, groundbreaking and uh, I, while it's uh, 20 plus years uh, uh, old, uh, it's still very, very current. I would uh, mm -hmm. recommend it to any uh, practitioner and executive in the BPM uh, area. Of course, uh, here, uh, Michael Hammer, or Hammer and Chambi is uh, a book uh, about the uh, here process engineering, process uh, re engineering uh, mm -hmm. uh, has uh, had a, a, a huge impact. Uh, uh, he's more uh, looking from that uh, strategic uh, point of view. And uh, uh, I think it's, uh, and, and I've also been lucky enough to, to work a bit uh, with uh, Michael Hammer before he uh, passed away. And uh, he had really a, a clear a top down vision on that. Uh, uh, however, when he brought that vision uh, to the, the public in the very early time, that was in a time when uh, many of uh, the, the organizations or many of the, the, the tools and techniques have not been ready mm -hmm. so that people knew what to do, but they didn't know how to uh, do it. And that's why some of those initiatives uh, failed, not because of Hammer's wrong thinking, but because of uh, the missing uh, uh, tools and techniques. And that was exactly the point uh, where uh, Shia, I think, uh, really complemented uh, uh, that, uh, that thinking of Hammer because Shia shows how to do it uh, uh, and uh, how to, to use the methods and tools to make uh, uh, things happen. So those uh, uh, two books have uh, most likely uh, shaped me most. Great. Well, thank you for, for that suggestion. Um, so before we wrap up, is there any final words or any last message you would like to uh, address to our audience? And that could be in Spanish or English. So I'm not going to put any pressure, but um, are there any final words you would like to, yeah. to close before we wrap up this session? Yes, I feel I have to do it uh, uh, in uh, English, but uh, uh, to close uh, the loop, uh, I can only recommend uh, to uh, hear the, the community of process practitioners. If you position and uh, discuss uh, the topic uh, with uh, executives, uh, with leaderships in your organization, try to focus on the outcomes and uh, the value that uh, process mm -hmm. management achieve. Don't uh, try to explain how the process repository uh, works and uh, 
uh, what's the special thing about uh, a process mining. Talk about the outcomes, the transparency it brings, uh, the, 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 the compliance while still uh, being agile, the, the efficiency, the quality gains, uh, the, the innovation, the, the, the conservation of uh, good uh, practices. These are uh, the, the topics that really uh, count and we as practitioners then line up the methods and tools behind it. Now that's a great piece of advice right there. Um, so thank you very much, Dr. Kirchner, for joining us. Um, muchas gracias a todos los que se conectaron a esta transmisión. Um, les recuerdo, si no lo han hecho, pueden suscribirse al canal Hablemos de Procesos y vamos entonces a estar continuando la serie con otros invitados que tenemos más adelante. Así que muchas gracias por conectarse y espero que les haya gustado este capítulo. Hasta luego. Muchas gracias, Diego, y hasta pronto. <música>